Why did modern humans take so long to leave Africa? It's a question that has puzzled anthropologists for generations. When you look at a map, the answer becomes more obvious than you might expect. Africa isn't just big, it's enormous. The entire United States, India, and China could all fit comfortably within its borders, with room to spare. From the lush forests of Central Africa to the endless sands of the Sahara, this vast continent has been a cradle of life for millions of years. It truly was a Garden of Eden. There was no ice, no endless winters, no frozen wastelands, just fertile land, rivers, and the kind of climate where early humans could thrive. For tens of thousands of years, there was simply no reason to leave. But science has long told us a simpler story. For decades, textbooks and documentaries repeated the same narrative that modern humans, known as Homo sapiens, first appeared around 200,000 years ago in East Africa, near modern-day Ethiopia. From there, we supposedly spread slowly north into Europe, then across the rest of the world. It was a neat, linear story, a comforting idea that we could trace our beginnings to one single birthplace. Yet, recent discoveries are rewriting that story in ways few could have imagined. New fossils, new dating techniques, and a deeper look at our own DNA suggest something far more complex, far more ancient, and far more beautiful than we ever believed. In this video, we'll explore a discovery that changes everything, a find that challenges the very timeline of who we are and where we came from. What if our species is far older and far more widespread than anyone ever imagined? What if the true story of humanity began not in one corner of Africa, but across the entire continent itself? For much of the past century, scientists believed they had already solved the riddle of our beginnings. The story seemed so clear, so simple, that it fit neatly into every museum display and every classroom textbook. Around 200,000 years ago, Somewhere in East Africa, perhaps near the rift valley of modern-day Ethiopia, our species, Homo sapiens, is said to have emerged. These early people looked strikingly similar to us, with upright bodies, intelligent eyes, and the ability to craft tools and form language. They were the first true humans, distinct from their earlier ancestors, and they would eventually change the face of the planet forever. According to this long-accepted story, Humanity's journey began in a single, sacred cradle, often described as the Garden of Eden. From that lush and fertile homeland, small bands of humans slowly began to move northward, following rivers, grasslands, and herds of animals. They crossed the deserts of North Africa, ventured into the Middle East, and from there spread into Europe, Asia, and, tens of thousands of years later, across the entire world. It was a narrative that made sense, a clean and linear path from one birthplace to global domination. This version of history even had its heroes. One of the most famous was the so-called Herto Man, discovered in Ethiopia's Afar region and dated to about 160,000 years ago. His bones were remarkably well-preserved, showing a face and skull nearly identical to that of modern humans. For decades, Herto Man was hailed as one of the earliest members of our species, a direct link between ancient humanity and us. He symbolized what scientists long believed, that East Africa, and particularly the Afar region, was the sole Garden of Eden where our species first appeared. In that comforting narrative, everything flowed outward from this single birthplace. From one population came all humans alive today. It was a tidy explanation beautiful in its simplicity and easy to accept. But like many stories that seem too perfect, this one began to show cracks as new discoveries emerged. Across the vast landscapes of Africa, archaeologists started finding fossils and artifacts that didn't fit the old timeline, skulls that seemed both ancient and modern, tools that were far older than they should have been, strange fragments of bone uncovered thousands of miles away from where our supposed story began. The deeper scientists dug, the more questions appeared. Could it be that our true origins were not confined to one region? Could the dawn of Homo sapiens have happened much earlier and in more than one place at once? For decades, we thought we knew where we came from. But new evidence was beginning to whisper another story, one that stretched farther back in time and across the entire continent, a story that would force us to rethink everything we believed about what it means to be human. 
But what if the story is far older and far more complex? Then came a discovery that changed everything, a finding that sent shockwaves through the scientific world. Thousands of miles away from the supposed birthplace of humanity, deep in the rugged hills of Morocco, lies a site known as Jebel Irhud. At first glance, it seems ordinary, just another rocky cave on the edge of the desert. But hidden within its dusty layers was something that would rewrite the entire story of human origins. The tale of Jebel Ehud actually began by accident. Back in the 1,960 seconds, miners working in the area stumbled upon fragments of skulls, jaws, and stone tools buried in the earth. At the time, scientists assumed these remains were relatively young, maybe 40,000 years old, because no one imagined modern humans could have lived there much earlier. The bones were carefully catalogued and then quietly stored away, a curiosity rather than a revelation. Decades later, between 2007 and 2011, a new team of paleoanthropologists returned to the site. This time, they were equipped with modern technology and a question that wouldn't leave them alone. Could these fossils be much older than we thought? As they began to excavate, they uncovered the partial remains of at least five individuals, three adults, a teenager, and a child around eight years old. Scattered nearby were flint tools, sharpened with remarkable skill, and fragments of rock that showed signs of having been heated in ancient campfires. To unlock the age of these artifacts, scientists turned to a technique called thermoluminescence dating. It works by measuring the light released when heating minerals that have absorbed natural radiation over time. When early humans placed those flint tools in a fire hundreds of thousands of years ago, electrons were released from the stones. After burial, those electrons began to accumulate again, trapped inside the mineral structure. By reheating the stones in the lab, researchers could measure the stored energy and calculate how long it had been since that ancient fire burned. The results stunned everyone. The tools, and therefore the people who made them, were about 315,000 years old, give or take 34,000 years. That date pushed the known timeline of Homo sapiens back by more than 100,000 years, far earlier than the Omo Kibish fossils in Ethiopia, which were once considered the oldest at around 200,000 years. Suddenly, the neat and tidy story of a single birthplace in East Africa was no longer enough. Our species had been walking the continent for far longer and in far more places than anyone had dared to imagine. And the surprises didn't stop there. In 2025, new research published in Nature revealed that even before leaving Africa, early Homo sapiens had already begun expanding their ecological reach, adapting to mountains, coasts, deserts, and forests across the continent. In other words, we were explorers long before we ever set foot outside Africa. It was a moment that shook the scientific community to its core. The timeline of human history had to be redrawn, the cradle of humanity was no longer confined to a single valley or region, it stretched across an entire continent. Standing before the evidence, scientists realized they were looking at something extraordinary, the oldest known Homo sapiens ever found, and they weren't discovered where anyone expected. The bones from Jebel Irhud whispered a truth that would echo through time that the story of us began far earlier and in far more places than we ever imagined. The fossils from Jebel Irhod looked both familiar and alien at the same time. Their faces were strikingly modern broad cheekbones, small brows, and flat noses that wouldn't seem out of place on a person today. But the backs of their skulls told a different story. They were long and low, unlike the rounded, globe-shaped craniums that define us now. Inside that skull space lay the key difference. Their brains were smaller and shaped differently suggesting that the most important transformation in human evolution, the one inside our heads, was still in progress. According to new research, that rounded brain case is not just a cosmetic change. It represents a crucial stage in the evolution of Homo sapiens. The expansion and reshaping of the brain, particularly the areas linked to reasoning, language, and social behavior, may have been the final step that turned early Homo sapiens into fully modern humans. It's a reminder that what makes us modern isn't just the tools we used or the way we walked, it's how we thought, how we imagined, how we connected with one another. But here's where the debate begins. Scientists don't all agree on what it truly means to be Homo sapiens. 
On one side are the cautious voices, the traditionalists. They argue that, unless a fossil possesses all the anatomical features of modern humans, it shouldn't be classified as one of us. To them, the Jebel Erhud people were close, but not quite there. They were a prototype, an early experiment along the path toward humanity. On the other side are the progressives, the scientists who see evolution as a smooth and continuous process, not a series of sharp divisions. They believe these Moroccan fossils deserve the name Homo sapiens precisely because they bridge that gap. To them, drawing a rigid line between modern and pre-modern misses the point entirely. Evolution doesn't make sudden leaps. It flows like a river, sometimes branching, sometimes merging again, never truly stopping. This disagreement goes beyond academic classification, it reaches to the heart of who we are. Are we defined by the shape of our skulls, or by the spark of awareness within them? Are the people of Jebel Irhud less human simply because their brains were smaller, or do they represent the very moment when humanity began to awaken? Perhaps that's the real lesson here. There was never a single day when Homo sapiens suddenly appeared, fully formed and self-aware. Instead, Humanity was a dawn that unfolded slowly. Across hundreds of thousands of years, a gradient of light between what we were and what we would become. And it leaves us with a question as timeless as the fossils themselves. What, after all, makes us human anyway? As scientists began piecing together discoveries from all corners of the continent, a new and more complex picture of our origins started to emerge. The old idea of a single birthplace, a solitary Garden of Eden nestled somewhere in East Africa, no longer seemed to fit the evidence. Instead, researchers proposed something revolutionary, the Pan-African model. According to this view, humanity didn't arise from one location or one small population. Our species evolved across the vast, interconnected landscapes of an entire continent. Africa itself was the cradle, not just one valley or one cave, Fossils began to confirm this idea. In the south, near a place called Florisbad, scientists uncovered remains dated to around 260,000 years ago, another early form of Homo sapiens. In the east, the Omo Kibish fossils from Ethiopia pointed to humans living there nearly 200,000 years ago. And far to the northwest, the now famous Jebel Irhud fossils in Morocco pushed the timeline back to 315,000 years. These finds were not isolated coincidences. Together, they revealed a remarkable truth. Early humans were already scattered across Africa long before our species stepped beyond its borders. So, how could people living thousands of miles apart still belong to the same species? The answer lies in movement constant, dynamic movement. Over hundreds of thousands of years, populations of early Homo sapiens traveled vast distances following rivers, coastlines, and herds of animals. When climates changed, they moved again. They met, interbred, and exchanged genes and ideas. This created what scientists now describe as a continent-wide network of human evolution, a genetic web that stretched from Morocco to South Africa and everywhere in between. This continual gene flow allowed traits to spread across regions. An adaptation that appeared in one group, perhaps a stronger immune system, a more efficient way to cool the body, or even a new kind of toolmaking could, over time, ripple across Africa. Slowly, these scattered populations became more alike, shaping the foundation of what we now call Homo sapiens. But the Pan-African story is not just about biology, it's also about resilience. Africa's environments were extraordinarily diverse. Humid jungles, endless deserts, coastal plains, and high mountains. Each demanded a different kind of survival. Early humans learned to hunt in open savannas, to fish along the coasts, to gather roots in forests, and to endure dry seasons in the interior. This adaptability, what scientists call ecological niche expansion, became one of our species' greatest strengths. It was this very flexibility, the ability to thrive in drastically different environments, that prepared us for our eventual journey out of Africa. In this light, Africa was not a single Garden of Eden, but a vast garden of many Edens. Each region, each landscape, contributed a piece of the puzzle that made us who we are. From the highlands of Ethiopia to the dunes of Morocco, from the grasslands of Kenya to the caves of South Africa, humanity was being woven together slowly, beautifully, 
and inevitably by the hands of time and evolution, we are not the descendants of one tribe, or one valley, or one miraculous birthplace. We are the children of an entire continent, a continent that shaped our bodies, our minds, and our ability to adapt to anything the world could throw at us. The Pan-African model reminds us of something profound, that Africa was not just where we began, it was where we became human. 300,000 years ago, Earth was not a lonely planet. It was a crowded neighborhood filled with many kinds of humans, some who looked like us, others who did not. We often imagine ourselves as the pinnacle of evolution. But for most of history, we were just one branch among many on a vast and tangled family tree. And that tree was alive with variety. Thanks to DNA analysis, we now know that our ancestors shared the world and even shared their genes with other human species. The Neanderthals in Europe and Western Asia were robust, intelligent, and skilled hunters who mastered fire long before we met them. Farther east, the Denisovans thrived in the mountains of Siberia, adapting to high altitudes and cold climates. When Homo sapiens finally spread beyond Africa, we didn't wipe them out instantly. We met them, lived near them, and, in many cases, mated with them. The traces of those encounters are still inside us today. If you have European or Asian ancestry, a small percentage of your DNA comes from Neanderthals or Denisovans. In a sense, they still live within us, and they weren't the only ones. In South Africa, scientists discovered Homo naledi, a small-brained species that lived about 250,000 years ago, around the same time as early Homo sapiens. In Indonesia, on the island of Flores, researchers found the remains of Homo floresiensis, affectionately called the Hobbit, a tiny human only about three and a half feet tall who may have survived until as recently as 50,000 years ago. Imagine that. While our ancestors were spreading across Africa, these other humans were crafting tools and building lives thousands of miles away. The world of our ancestors was not one species, one path, or one destiny. It was a shared experiment, a living laboratory of evolution, where intelligence, creativity, and survival were tested in countless forms. But over time, one by one, those other humans disappeared, whether through climate change, competition, or pure chance, only Homo sapiens remained. And that is perhaps the greatest mystery of all. Why us? Why did our branch survive when so many others fell away? Was it luck? adaptability, or something deeper, something in the way we think, imagine, and connect? Whatever the reason, our survival was never guaranteed. We are, in every sense, the last echoes of a world once full of human voices. As we look back on this story, the discoveries from Morocco stand as one of the most profound turning points in our understanding of who we are. Those ancient bones from Jebel Ihud dated to about 315,000 years ago forced us to redraw the timeline of human history. The Pan-African hypothesis revealed that our origins weren't confined to a single valley or river, but spread across an entire continent, and the subtle reshaping of the human brain rounder, larger, more complex, reminds us that evolution was never about sudden miracles. It was about slow, steady change unfolding over countless generations until thought itself became our most powerful tool. Each discovery is another piece of an enormous puzzle, one that stretches across time, continents, and imagination. Fossils, DNA, and tools are not just scientific data, they are messages from our ancestors, whispers from a world that once teemed with many kinds of humans. Every clue we uncover adds depth to the story of how we became us. And perhaps the most humbling truth is this. We are the last survivors of a tangled family tree, the final branch of a lineage that once included so many others. Our roots run deep in African soil roots that connect every person alive today, no matter who we are or where we come from. When you think about it, this story isn't just about the past, it's about us, right now. It's about resilience, curiosity, and the human drive to explore both the world around us and the mysteries within ourselves. So as we close this chapter, take a moment to reflect on your place in that ancient journey. And if this story moved you, share it because the more we understand our beginnings, the better we can imagine our future.